Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Girard Perigo Ferrari 250 GT Tour de France 40mm in stainless steel. You can see this Tour de France on our website, watchyouwant.com. Purchase it there. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. You can also click on the card in the upper right hand corner of this video at any time to see our full listing for this watch with extra photos, accessories included, and complete pricing. There's also a link to our website in the description box. Now on my wrist, six Six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see that this is a great combination of a traditional tri-register, tri-tone racing style chronograph with a modern case that, while large and impressive in proportions, isn't oppressive in outright size. Now, 40 millimeters across the round of the case includes the case without the chronograph pushers or the crown. From lug to lug, the watch has a nice tidy span of 46.5 millimeters, actually quite compact for a watch that measures 40 across. It's also reasonably slim, all things considered. 13.5 millimeters thick. You can see it has a generously sloped case flank and conical bezel, so it easily slides underneath a dress cuff, and it will pair well with formal attire with that versatile white metal and black dial combination. It's also equipped with a nice formal rectangular scale alligator leather strap, and you can see that Gerard Perigo pulls off a little bit of an aesthetic coup using semi conforming spring bars that do hug the curve of the case and visually provide a very coherent integrated look. There's very minimal daylight between strap and case, but at the same time, they don't want to billow out. They don't fight the curve of your wrist. They don't basically pin themselves against the flanks of the case. So you get that integrated look, yet you don't get the virtual flare from a stiff strap. Now it is a very supple strap. You can see the bolstering is almost nil. Likewise, on the underside, a very supple calfskin, and you can see that the clasp is of outstanding quality, beautifully polished. The clasp actually includes the Ferrari Cavallino, right in the pin buckle element. You can see it in relief, very subtle but nicely done. Inside, beautifully built by Gerard Perigo in house. Gerard Perigo is a complete manufacturer, and while this caliber is a modular chronograph on an ETA base, Gerard Perigo did fabricate the entire case executed the design of the watch and of course completed the pin buckle it's, or the deploying clasp itself. So you do get quite a bit of manufacturer content here. Now the dial is classical. Again, when you talk about the origins of the caliber, it's important to remember that some of the most heralded motorsports chronographs of all time think the original Hoyer Carreras, the Rolex Daytonas of the 1960s, such as the Paul Newmans, all of the great screw down and pump push pusher Daytonas, everything really with the manual wind caliber was essentially an outsourced movement, but none were as sophisticated as what you see here. This is the Girard Perigo caliber 2280, 57 joules, bi-directional automatic winding. It has a 42 hour power reserve, and because of the vertical clutch system that engages the Dubois de Prez chronograph module, the chronograph seconds hand starts without any kind of jump, it stops without stagger, and resets precisely to the index of 12 each time. Also, because of the vertical clutch, if you prefer to have seconds at center rather than the subdial, you can simply leave this one running. Now, it includes a number of deluxe features, including a 24 hour subdial at 9 o'clock, and this is consistent with the Tour de France theme of the watch because on the case back you see the historic 1956 to 1959 Ferrari 250 GT Tour de France in profile. Now 77 of these were built to compete in the now defunct Tour de France Auto. Held between 1899 and 1986, it was a historic rally race that ran over a period of 10 days and was in many ways sort of like a Le Mans event on the road or its cycling analog, the Tour de France. But the bottom line is that this watch is far more sophisticated than most historic motorsports chronographs because in addition to that 24 hour subdial that gives you AM PM distinction for the hands at center, you also have a radial display of minutes. So this minutes hand actually makes its way around the dial over the course of 60 minutes as the hour, hand, the hour counter at six o'clock counts off. So you have easy reference to arguably the two most important displays of a chronograph, seconds and minutes. It's an easy watch to read. It's also a classical image because the tri-compacts 
Motorsports Chronograph, again, in the tradition of something like the Hoyer Carrera, the Rolex Daytona, and even the original Motorsports Intended 1957 Omega Speedmaster. All of those watches bear a striking resemblance to this one, and this one features the most desirable combination of white on black with small accents of red to set it apart to really pop in person, as well as beautiful contrasting finish of the case. You can see how the bezel itself is a satin brushed grain, and the flanks of the case, as well as the lugs, are beautifully polished. Now, it's a memorable case back. Each one's individually numbered. These were built around the turn of the century, and around the year 2000, suitably 2,000 examples of this watch were made. It's a handsome, versatile, and sophisticated take on the motorsports chronograph. At 40 millimeters, it's bigger than most of the vintage references, so it has good wrist presence. And it'll have quite a presence on your wrist if you so choose. You can see it and you can buy it on our website, watchyouwant.com.